Hello and welcome to the Screen Savers. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you so much for joining us. This is a great show. The show where we're going to talk about the coolest, latest, greatest stuff. Answer your questions. And we want to, you know, I kind of feel bad, but I want to say hi to Brian. He, uh, the guy who just did the announcement is, uh, is, uh, has a, a band called The Bots. They're at The Bots. The Bots. The Bots. And it's a synthesizer band. Is that right, Brian? It's all synthesizers. Yeah. Let's yeah, hear it. We got a little bit of this. Of the, and I was born to be free. free. I just can't stop it. No. You collect voice synthesizers. Yeah, I, I have a, a whole bunch of different speech synthesizers of That's various so cool. kinds. Some of them are concatenating samples. Others are physical models. And I decided to just make a band out of them. They sound yeah. great. You can get the, the CD on the, the website, the yep. Oh, yeah. That's kind of cool. We'll, we'll be hearing more of that a little later on. Maybe you can do a song for us, Brian. In time for the green hammer. Time, time for the green hammer. News time. Time for the green hammer. Google is a hacking tool. How about what? that? Google, it turned, according to Adrian Lamo, uh, he says that one of the best hacking tools out there, and he, he's proved it, is Google. In fact, if you enter in a, a sample phrase, which he provides, I don't think we should provide it on the air, but you enter in the sample phrase, it'll, it'll dig up over several hundred uh, FileMaker databases, many of which really? are unprotected or simply protected, some of which contain sensitive information, uh, medical information. There's FileMaker. Uh, also, and that's just one example. So who is Mr. Mr. Lamo? Lamo is on the line with us. That's who he is. Uh -huh. Adrian Lamo, uh, who is specialized really in uh, kind of, I love what he does. He's kind of on his own, freelance hacks and mm -hmm. shows people where the, the holes are. Uh, he's the guy who uh, got the sec social security numbers of all those people on the New York Times database. And he's on the phone with us right now. Hi, Adrian. Howdy. You say that Google is the ultimate hacking tool. Well, perhaps not the ultimate, but it's a very effective one. And really, it's uh, one of the ones that's done me a whole lot of good during my intrusions in the past. So how do you use Google as a hack tool? Well, it varies by implementation, but in, in this case, uh, there was just a common string that showed up in FileMaker databases that were shared on the web, and since Google amalgamates so much information in one place, just one quick search identified uh, more servers than you could have ever found scanning manually with some sort of port scanner to look for them. It's doing its job as a, as a search engine. It really isn't Google's fault, I guess. It's the people who leave these FileMaker databases online unprotected, right? Well, anytime that you have anything that amalgamates information in that way, it leaves itself open to, a, to an application like that, anything what, that centralizes information. What kind of stuff did you find on these FileMaker databases? Well, one of the more relevant ones was a database of patient medical records for Ooh. apparently a neurosurgery center of some sort. And that was the one that stuck out the most in my mind because there really should be a pretty wide divide between your medical records and Google. Yeah. The, the two should never touch. Never ideally. touch. <laughs> Don't touch. Now, uh, I guess the flaw in this case was they had a password, but it was a pretty obvious password. It was the name of the database. And, <laughs> you, you know, it, it's one of those things that they probably figured that it was something that would never get out of their department. They, right. they figured it would never be outside of their work group. And it's, it's understandable, but that doesn't necessarily make it any better. Well, I think that yeah, people forget that if a computer is connected to the net, it, it's visible. Unless you take measures otherwise, right? Well, people forget it pretty frequently, and it's, it's perhaps more understandable in an academic environment or uh, an environment where information needs to be shared than it is in some of the corporate environments where I've found things that were uh, you, uh, even more poorly thought out in the past. Now, are you worried that by putting this, putting this word out that you're kind of uh, disabling this most useful tool for yourself? or are, uh, I, I don't believe so, no. There's nothing that I could really say here that would make it any less useful for me. Uh, the, the information is always going to be out there. Yeah. And I, I don't mind if more people are aware that they should be careful about what information yeah. they put out there. Yeah, absolutely. The folks at Google have always provided any webmaster the opportunity to pull the listing off of Google with 24-hour notice. So presumably this college could go to Google and say, hey, pull that right. stuff out. You know, I, I don't feel that that's an appropriate solution. I, I think that it's a Band-Aid solution, and it's, it's a solution that allows people to do it to sort of escape responsibility. Right. They can say... This information is no longer being pointed at, so we no longer have a problem when the problem should be dealt with at the source rather it's, than... Right. It's still insecure. The Maybe you should seen. properly uh, the, the information it. is still there if they do that. It, it doesn't fix anything. Right. Good point. Good point. Adrian, we appreciate uh, all the work you've done in publicizing holes in the infrastructure. I hope you'll keep doing it. Well, I, I certainly intend to, and I'm glad that in this case, people that were contacted seem to take it better and take it with a, more, a <laughs> deal of more responsibility than entities like the New York Times. The, the feds didn't... Come knocking at the door this time, huh?
<laughs> Great to talk to you, Adrian. Thank you for your time. Take care. Adrian Lamo. Who, uh, Lamo. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, he hates it when I say that. <laughs> Adrian Lamo. Probably hates who, when anybody says yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> and I would too. Who is, uh, who is uh, the, the home, for a long time, Bill is the homeless hacker. I didn't hack, ask him if, mm -hmm. he's, if he's living somewhere now. But for a while, he was just kind of sleeping with friends and cool dude. moving around. Very interesting fella. Google, hacking tool. Another charming news, the Associated Press reports that as part of their ongoing court battle, Microsoft is required to release thousands of documents, some previously were told top secret, to upstart rival Lindos of Lindos.com. Among other things, the documents include papers relating to Microsoft's, Microsoft's, not Scoff's, previous copyright battles with Apple. Lindos wants to use the documents to prove their case that the term Windows is generic. I can't believe Microsoft. Bill Gates has got to be just spinning in his grave. Well, he's not dead he's yet. He's not dead yet. But he's got to be spinning like crazy having to give this stuff to Lindos. Yeah, well, one can only imagine. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm... It does bring us to our question of the day. Uh, um, a Salon Magazine columnist recently yeah. took on the question of Windows versus Lindos and uh, contemplating the point of using Windows when new versions of Linux both looked and acted the same, were easy to install. Except uh, that it doesn't. It, it's not quite Windows. Quite and I Windows. think the Salon guy missed the point there. Yeah, I think the Salon guy, okay. But our question is really why people don't, why more people don't use Linux. Yeah. Or BSD. Uh, or BSD. Why not? Why don't you use a Unix? Or is it bad marketing on the part of the Linux folks? Linux is doing a good job marketing anyway. Too hard to use, too lazy to switch. You owe Bill Gates too much money? Why? Yeah, well, this is doing such a good job, they can get people to pay $100 a year for a free to resubscribe to continue, yeah, for a free operating system. That's good marketing. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant marketing. <laughs> Go to thescreensavers.com, cast your vote. You can also talk back if you have other reasons why you don't use Linux, or if you use Linux, you can tell the world why they ought to, too. Hey, folks, don't go anywhere. You're going to miss Patrick taking a ride with the Blue Angels. Yeah, that day is finally coming. I cannot wait to see this. And after the break, here's a peek at something that rivals DVD quality. That's the bad. There's the good. Wow. Blurring the lines once again when the screensavers continues.